ways. Mm. Um, it would be hard, as Seneca tells us, to imagine a life without friends. He spends the latter part yeah. of his life writing letters to a friend, Lucilius. Mm. Um, he rethinks notions of fame or gloria by thinking, you know, it really matters how I'm remembered, and maybe you too. Mm. Um, he writes plays, um, really, really powerful plays. It may not express his philosophy, but sometimes they're foils to it, and sort of, you know, one is about Hercules, and the guy with enormous strength, you know, slays dragons and monsters, but he's he's a action guy and totally consumed by action. Mm. And he, at the end, when he commits a horrible deed, he he wants to kill himself. And his mm. father mm. reaches out and says, "You can't leave me." And his best friend reaches out and says, I'll, I'll find shelter for you. He doesn't himself know how to give himself mercy. Essentially, he's killed his children. Hmm. He, he doesn't know how to give himself any mercy at all, but his friends do. Seneca's telling us something hmm. that we can learn from the compassion of friends, that we can find self-empathy. This is very important for my work with um, service members who often um, find themselves in the middle of killing that they can't quite justify or collateral incidents that are fully permissible, legally permissible, and probably morally permissible by the laws of war, mm. but still feels horrible and seems to go against their own, own views of, of uh, what's good. So being able to find the resources that friends offer in a notion of resilience and a notion of grit that has social undercurrents, I think is very healthy, and we need to be able to think about that a little bit more. Yeah, and and I would agree with you. I think Seneca probably, uh, similar to Marcus Aurelius as well, they, they both just sort of had this view that uh, there was a very, very important aspect to friendship and, and, and connection and and even, I mean, look at Marcus Aurelius. His his first writings in his in his meditations were him talking about all of the beautiful people in his life who had added to his character, the things that he'd learnt from them, um, and and essentially sharing that this is something that we need. We need to take the best parts of the people who are in our lives, and and uh, I mean, even that argument alone would sort of make the idea that we don't need friends, but it's good to have them void, right? Because it's like, well, you do need friends. You do need people in your life surrounding you who have qualities that you don't, because by surrounding yourself with people who have qualities that you don't, you inevitably pick up those qualities and become better if if you look for those for those ways that you can improve, right? Right. So I guess part of what they're trying to do in their fine tuning of lots of terms is think about what need means. So mm. they have a, 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 a stipulated term that you don't necessarily go for something that's an indifferent, a preferred indifferent, like a friend, in a way that is a desire, mm. in the way that Aristotle talked about a desire. Um, you have this other thing that you, that is part of your um, going toward and avoiding things, and that is this um, selection um, and it's a, 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 you, you approach the impulses in a way that allows you to select without sticky, I say sticky attachment or a sticky acquisitiveness. Mm. And so, and to lose without, or to be threatened with loss without fearful avoidance, mm. um, sort of anxious aversion. So they want to still have what we today would call behavioral ways of going towards something and, and being attracted to it. And, um, uh, I mean, our survival depends upon staying away from certain kinds of deadly threats, threats mm. that are unnatural for, uh, for us to face, you know, stick your hand in fire. You do it once and you won't do it twice. Mm. And that's how we, how we teach children. So you need to have that kind of response and you might just say, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's automatic, or in some cases, they're behavioral responses. So, but we need to train a behavior, they say, that isn't 
saturated with acquisitiveness and saturated with the dread of loss. Mm. And so that's how I would put it. It's not that they're telling us to give up that stuff. It's better to have health than not have health. It's better to have friends than not have friends. You just have to have them in a way in which you're prepared for possible loss. And that's mm. what the training is about. Yeah. So that's how I see it. It's to help you get rid of some of the, debil- the debilitating aspects of attachment and loss that we suffer and that creates enormous amount of anxiety and stress in our lives. 